Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for a link to my Amazon store, where I've compiled some of the very best items available, including some of my own personal recommendations. Thanks! What's going on YouTube? Little Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Benchmade 940-2001. Um, this is uh, not a 940 with aftermarket parts on it. This is a special variant of the 940, a limited uh, variant as far as I understand. And at the time of this video, right before I started the video, I checked to make sure um, it doesn't look like they're available anymore at retailers. Now, I don't know if that means that you know, there'll be more coming and they've got a few more before they finish the run. This does not seem like a 940 that they'll make a full production, that, that they will make a permanent production version of. So I fear that if it is discontinued, um, any type of review and, you know, where I can conclude at, is this knife worth the money is going to be meaningless because the secondary market will do what it does with rare Benchmade, uh, uh, 940 variants and, and Griptilian variants, and it'll just throw the price through the roof. So keep that in mind, guys. I'll tell you my thoughts based on what they were asking for, but it looks as though as of right now, this is out of stock. Um, anyways, this was sent to me by Zach Stuff. If you are not subscribed to Zach Stuff, what are you doing? <laughs> Zach Stuff has awesome content. Uh, you can literally just leave my video, go over and subscribe to him real quick and come back. I promise I'll still be here. Thanks so much, Zach, for sending this guy along. And thank you to my generous patrons for supporting me right now. Uh, if you'd like to get your hands on some of those stickers and some other exclusive benefits, there's a link down in the description. Your support would mean the world to me. Let's go ahead and measure this guy. Uh, in typical 940 fashion, we're coming in at something like 7.8, 7.9 inches overall. Blade length, uh, about 3.4 inches. And cutting edge, about 3.4 inches. That's always been a big thing with the Benchmade 940. It's overall carry profile, size, and the uh, the the um, um, ratios between blade and handle. Um, that's what caused it. For anybody who doesn't know, like, what's the big deal about this knife? It's, uh, that, that's it right there. Um, and it still remains to be a contender for, you know, the title of greatest EDC folding knife of all time. It just, it just is. Um, or I'm not saying that I absolutely think that way, but it is absolutely a contender. Let's go ahead and do some uh, size comparisons up against the um, Ontario Rat Model 1. Rat 1 is coming in at uh, 8.6 inches overall. So again, really, it looks like it's this little teeny tiny knife, but it, it isn't. Up against the uh, Spyderco PM2. Spyderco PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall. Uh, how about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Ritter Hogue coming in at 8 inches overall. So you can see there, it's very similar in overall length to, to the uh, Ritter Hogue or Griptilian. It's just nowhere near as tall. Uh, and last but not least, the Spyderco Para 3. Para 3 coming in at 7 and a quarter inches overall. How's the action on this guy? Um, so in the past, I've had a little bit of trouble with uh, Benchmade fit and finish. This one does not seem to exhibit any of those issues. Uh, this seems to be one of the newer, you know, uh, no fit and finish issue uh, Benchmade knives. And the cutting edge looks great. Doesn't look wonky in any areas. It absolutely locks up solid. Um, this one seems to be very new. In fact, I know that it's it's very new because I remember when uh, Zach got his hands on this. Um, I don't think it's fully broken in yet, but there's no stickiness in the lock. I can absolutely swing it shut. I can wheel it out. I can do the, you know, the reverse flick. I can do the forward flick, all that. It just doesn't quite drop shut yet, but it's very, very close. Um, so the action's very good on this. It runs on phosphor bronze, and this is a very smooth phosphor bronze action. Very happy with that. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. Get out my handy-dandy we have magnetic stubby driver and we have bit selector two items that are very inexpensive and very recommendable you can find them in the amazon store that i reference at the beginning of every single video just pull open the store look for knife maintenance and you should be able to find them pretty easily i'm going to guess this is exactly the same as other 940s um i i checked t8 first but i believe it's actually a t10 that's t9 label your bits <laughs> Let's try the T10 real quick. Be real careful here. I don't want to touch that titanium. Yeah, that's a T10 on the pivot. And I'm going to guess, like most Benchmades, the hardware on the scale is T6. The reason I put my thumb on the bit is to guide it there so I don't touch it. Yeah, uh, or don't touch the surface of the titanium. Yeah, T6 on the handle hardware, on the pocket clip, things like that. So you guys know the, the the drill here, what I say about um, 
T6. I don't like them. I wish everything was just T8 or higher. Uh, that'd make it easier. It'd make it easier, you know, safer on your bits, safer on the fasteners, so you didn't, you know, strip them. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. As long as you're careful, you shouldn't have a problem disassembling this knife. The axis lock actually will make it more difficult to disassemble than anything else, but with practice, you, you can get it figured out. Uh, let's see here. Carry profile. So this is a notoriously thin knife. This particular one is a heavier variant because of the solid titanium scales. But other than that, I believe the dimensions are exactly the same. Uh, blade stock thickness is coming in at 112 thousandths, 113 thousandths. So very thin blade stock. And then carry profile. I mean, we already talked about this. This thing is an absolute winner. Up against the Spider Copera 3 and PM2, two knives that have awkward carry profiles that nobody ever complains about. You can see there, it is uh, about the same length uh, overall head to toe as the Para 3, maybe a little bit longer. Um, and then in terms of height, uh, it's got both of them beat by a long shot. Um, in terms of thickness, actually, too, it's just not a thick knife. It's just a thin knife, right? So for those of you looking for a full titanium knife that's got a good carry profile and good blade to handle ratio, that might be enough for you right there to pick this up, if you can find one. <laughs> I keep having to remind myself that it's just not available. People ask me, why do you review knives if you can't get them? Because I like them. <laughs> I, the, the, uh, the main drive for doing this, guys, is that I like knives. I like interesting knives. I like interesting variants of knives, right? I am a knife nut. So I want you guys to be entertained. I want you to be informed. And in the event, you know, that there's somebody watching who's thinking, I'm okay with paying whatever the secondary market's interested in, you know, charging me. I just want to know, is this a good knife? Then I'm reviewing for those people. But I also just like to talk about knives. So whether or not a knife is discontinued or available or, you know, there's this drama associated with this drama, that has no bearing. I will review the stuff that I think is cool. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> Anyways, um, let's go ahead and talk about the anatomy here. So these are titanium scales. This knife was expensive when it was available. And I'll tell you guys right now, this was a $340 knife. Now let's let's talk about the, um, the 940 series. So you have the standard, the one that everybody has seen, the one that's been around since the dawn of time, right? It was here with the dinosaurs and the trilobites and all that stuff. I'm just kidding. But... Uh, green aluminum, uh, purple titanium backspacer, and originally it was 154 cm, and then they upgraded it to S3B. And you can still buy that knife for what, 170, 175 bucks, something like that. Uh, and then there was the 940-1 with carbon fiber scales and S90V, and it was tumbled, not satin finished, but tumbled. And those came in at a whopping 275 ish dollars, and you can still pick that knife up. By the way, I'm a Blade HQ affiliate now, so there'll be links for other variants of the 940 down in the description, or you can just click on the Blade HQ link if you want to find them. Um, and then came after that, as far as production, we're not talking about, you know, exclusives or sprint runs or anything like that. Then came the 940-2, which is my favorite version of the knife, and that's G10 and S30V. It's lighter than the other variants, and it still comes in at a kind of okay price. What are they, 170 something like that, right? So Flytanium starts making titanium scales for these guys. So now you have the option to upgrade your 940, your 940-1, or your 940-2 in titanium. Uh, there are other makers out there who, who have come out with different titanium scales, but Flytanium, uh, to my knowledge, made a contoured titanium scale for this for, what were they, 70 to 80 bucks? So if you add $70, let's say on the low end, to 170, uh, then you're looking at a $340 knife that's S3B and titanium. If you upgrade your, um, you know, and that's the case with the aluminum or the, G, the G10 one. Let's say you've got the S90V variant, right? $270 on the low end and you add $70 to it, um, then uh, you're at, uh, or wait, <laughs> my mouth is incorrect. Did, did I say it? With the G10 and aluminum, if you if you add those scales, you're looking at a $240 titanium knife. If you're, if you're wanting the S90V, which is what this is, uh, then you take the uh, carbon fiber variant, you add the $70 flytanium scales, and then you're at a $340 knife. Benchmade was aware of this. That's where the pricing came from. They put their own titanium scales on it. They made it unique by adding the red studs, the red barrel spacers. They put $340, a $340 price tag on it. 
arguably, you know, the contoured titanium scales, I think, look a little bit better. This is a, you know, a flat surface on a titanium. Some people like that, some people don't, but the titanium ones look a little bit more flashy, and the titanium scales traditionally do fit with precision. God, I'm thinking back now. I'm, I'm second guessing my price. You guys know what I mean with the pricing. I think you guys can can put put that together. Um, but that's I think how how Benchmade came up with this pricing. And then at the same time, this is a limited run, so they wanted to cater to people who wanted the all Benchmade thing, right? I mean, if you're talking like you know price for materials, and I could make my own for this, well, well then yeah, you you could have when it when this was you know I mean you you can still do that. Uh, and then you can get the version of the uh, the um, 940 that you want. But with this guy, uh, they wanted, you know, people who really wanted the all Benchmade build, not aftermarket parts, and then some type of unique flare on it with the red uh, barrel spacers and then the numbering, you know, saying it was an official 940 in titanium. I mean, that's, I think that's how they justify that price. Is a 940 in S90V and titanium and some red barrel spacers worth $340? I don't know. In a lot of ways, not really. I mean, truthfully, uh, $280 for the carbon fiber variant, I think, is ungodly high. Uh, and even if they had originally come out with a titanium version of this and put a $280 price tag on it, I would have been like, eh, it's okay. S90V and titanium, you know. But we're all a little bit quick to jump on Benchmade because of the whole, you know, people say, oh, the butterfly tax or Benchmade overcharges, right? So people get that in their minds and then subconsciously they prejudge Benchmade. Truthfully, if this knife had come out between $280 and $300, I, I think that it would be, you know, reasonably fair. Keep in mind that you do get Benchmade's legendary warranty. Benchmade has one of, if not the very best knife warranties out there. Uh, very, very good. Quick turnaround times and everything. They will send you parts. I've, I've utilized it many times. I have experience with the Benchmade warranty and I think it's great. So is this knife worth $340? I don't think so. But here's the thing, guys. That's probably not what you're going to pay for it now. If you want one brand new, you're probably going to pay more than that. So there's going to be complaints. There's going to be frustrations. There's going to be, be, you know, the usual people saying Benchmade overcharges, you know, that's, I just expect that every time I review a Benchmade knife. But yeah, truthfully, I think to me, this this feels more like 280 bucks. You know, that's what I think. Um, but man, is it is it nice to look at. Oh boy, this is a good looking 940. I'm a big fan of, you know, uh, all titanium construction. Normally, I'm a big fan of an all monochromatic look, but I have to, uh, I got to say this, uh, and I, I don't think these are red anodized uh, uh, aluminum um, studs. I think they're probably steel and then they're coated with, um, you know, perhaps it's an aluminum or titanium. It's probably not a titanium coating because red's not on the spectrum for titanium, but it's some type of coating that can then be anodized so that it's more durable than paint and then it ends up being red. And it adds some really interesting flair to the knife. I also really like Benchmade's tumbled finish, right? That looks really, really good. And it's S90V, which, you know, S90V, I think, is, in today's knife world, is, is uh, not, not very well exemplified on a lot of the models that it comes on. S90V is uh, a uh, powder steel that greatly emphasizes edge retention over just about everything else. It is still stainless, not quite as stainless as M390, um, and then it's not tough at all. These are, S90V is notoriously chippy. So, the knives that it works really, really well on are smaller knives that are you know, more so EDC knives, just knives that are going to do a lot of cutting, not a lot of hard cutting, not a lot of impact cutting or any in impact cutting, really, uh, just a lot of cutting for a long period of time. And S90V is going to be great for that. And I think it's awesome in this edge geometry, too. Um, these guys are uh, long, narrow blades. There is a flat that comes out about 40 percent. Um, and you can see there it does carry some some decent thickness out here because of the shape and geometry of the blade. And then it comes down to a decent uh, cutting edge. It's not ultra thin, but I wouldn't call it thick. But S90V is going to work great on this guy. This is a fantastic little EDC knife. It is very easy to disengage and engage the axis lock. It's very easy to get your uh, thumb behind that thumb stud and flip it out. You know, And also ergonomics on this guy are, are fantastic. I think it's uh, made you know even more fantastic by this newer style clip, the one that we uh, first saw on the Benchmade Bugout. Sort of a satin finished clip that contrasts well with everything else. 
it's just excellent. This is a very easy knife to hang on to. And I've, I've had a lot of experience with this guy. I've owned the 940 three different times. One in 154CM, one in S30V, and those are the aluminum variants. And then another one, a 940-2 in G10 and, and S30V. And yeah, it's a great knife. My my love for the 940, I've said this many times, has kind of fallen away. I've just become bored with the standard 940. But it was it was kind of like the fire was restoked with this titanium variant because I was like, oh, that's awesome. You know, titanium and S90V, that's really cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, the thing that held me back from buying this guy, truthfully, was the fact that it was 340 bucks. I, I mean, it, there was a time where I looked and it was available and I could spend 340 bucks on this guy. Um, this uh, this version of this knife is made specifically for people who just, um, you know, really, really love Benchmade, really, really love the 940, and really, really wanted a factory version of this knife with titanium scales. They didn't want to have to buy one and add aftermarket titanium scales, which, by the way, are manufactured in China. I love titanium, but I think you guys should know that. Titanium, titanium scales, as far as I understand, are not manufactured in the United States, right? So keep that in mind. If you want it full, you want to be able to say, I've got a Benchmade 940 in full titanium and the entire thing is made in the United States, including the titanium scales. Well, this was the one. This is the only one, unless you, you know, pay. I think Rock Scale Design uh, makes their, their titanium scales in the USA, but you'll find that those scales cost a lot more money. Um, so it's, again, it's the same argument. You can get this material for so much less. Yeah, if it's manufactured in China, it's always the case. People are quick to jump on the whole greed factor thing, but a lot of it is labor and manufacturing costs. So that's, I mean, like, you don't have to, you, you don't, here, here's the end result. You, you can look at this and go, well, I don't want it. It's just too much money. Or I really, really want that and I'm going to buy it. You know, <laughs> you, uh, you know, fa facts are facts. And then you can decide whether or not you want to buy this object based on how much it costs and the facts that surround it. Um, as it makes me sound really, really arrogant. I'm not trying to like, you know, say that I'm smarter than everybody or anything like that. That's just, that's, that's just what it is. That's why things cost more sometimes. But yeah, admittedly, Benchmade knives seem to cost a little bit more on top of that. It just depends on where you, you know, decide your value system is. If you value the warranty and the extra, you know, part of that, then maybe this makes a little bit more sense to you. If you don't value that and you kind of look at, you know, materials and you're like, I don't really care where they're manufactured. I just, you know, I want titanium on this thing and I can have it for less Then, you, then yeah, then just ignore this and go buy what you want, you know? Um, but fact remains, it's just not going to be available. I think this is a beautiful knife. And I, I mean, functionally, yeah, this thing is going to be wonderful. I suppose we didn't weigh it. This is a non-traditional, whenever a knife is like unavailable or I've reviewed it before, I don't go about it the, the same way that I usually do. Solid titanium scales bring this guy to 3.39 ounces. Now, there's going to there's gonna be a lot of people who are like, oh, it's so much heavier than the aluminum and the G10. Oh. Guys, this is still right on that ounce and inch thing, right? So a lot of times the same people, you know, that will, um, you know, complain about a variant of a model that is known for being ultra lightweight, if they'll complain about it for a variant being heavier, a lot of those people will also, you know, applaud a knife that is, you know, has, that is an ounce and inch in terms of weight to blade uh, or cutting edge ratio. So before you start complaining, understand that this is a 3.4 inch blade with a 3.4 inch cutting edge, and it's still coming in at about 3.3, 3.4 ounces. So you gain the benefit of having titanium, which, you know, has great structural integrity, great uh, uh, strength to weight ratio. Um, and then is uh, not something that can corrode, not that the aluminum can. And, you know, you, you get that kind of, I mean, let's be honest here. If you're like me, you're like, I just like titanium. <laughs> I just like it more than aluminum. It's It feels nicer, right? Um, and, and uh, in my opinion, it looks nicer. And I, I kind of enjoy a little bit of solidity. This is a really interesting variant. And I think it caught a lot of people's eyes. You know, I mean, it, uh, this is what it comes down to for those of you who are still here at 19 minutes and haven't left your comment pe people will preemptively leave their comments before they finish the video and hear everything I have to say um, and I always know right because <laughs> I'll know if I cover the topic that they're complaining about later in the video that's how I know if people watched or not obviously right but yeah here's what it comes down to this is a really cool knife a lot of people want it it's an it's a you know a legendary uh, model and it's uh, got a, a handle material that people have wanted for a really long time. Flytanium made uh, aftermarket scales way before you know Benchmade uh, had this model available, 
And so it kind of, uh, you know, painted a picture and people were ready, I think, preemptively to complain about that and the fact that Benchmade knives are generally overpriced. And now it's not available anymore. So even if the, you know, the arguments stand, it's kind of trivial because you're going to end up having to pay more money if you really, really want this knife. If you didn't want this knife to begin with, then it doesn't really matter. Truthfully, I think this is super cool. Um, and uh, it's, I mean, I, it makes no sense to put it on my most recommended knives playlist, but this is the coolest version of the 940 that I've ever seen. And, uh, you know, considering my my past with the 940, you know, my, my good, uh, I, I have had a positive experience with it. And it is an excellent uh, EDC tool. Uh, this particular variant is going to go on my favorite knives of all time playlist. Um, that doesn't mean anything other than that. It's just my favorite. You know what? What makes a knife my favorite? Um, I just really, really like it. My emotional, physical, and mental response to this knife is positive. It makes me happy. Really, really like it. It's neat, and I really appreciate Zach's stuff uh, for letting me uh, take a look at this guy. So Zach, I'm going to get this uh, headed back to you. Thanks so much, buddy. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, found it any entertaining or got anything out of it at all, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on this metal complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.